In October 1942, on a remote German island in the Baltic Sea, the first successful launch of a rocket into the stratosphere took place. Originally, all the scientists had wanted to do was go to the moon, but instead, they had created Hitler's most advanced weapon of terror. Hitler had the idea that uh, maybe the rocket could help him to win that war. In its last desperate attempt to turn the course of World War II, Nazi Germany unleashed an arsenal of sinister weapons against the Allies. In the next few months, more than 60,000 people would be killed or seriously wounded. One of their children came into us and said, Mummy hasn't come home. And actually, Mummy never did come home. Using rare archive film and color reenactments, Battle Stations enters the world of rocket scientists, secret weapons, and the race to seek and destroy two of Hitler's most elusive and devastating weapons of war. Germany's fascination with rockets and the idea of interplanetary travel dated back to the 1920s when a wave of rocket fever swept through the country. The German army decided to involve itself in rocket research out of its desire to circumvent the harsh terms of the Treaty of Versailles, which Germany was forced to sign after its defeat in World War I. The treaty imposed severe limits on the armaments Germany could produce, but contained a loophole. It made no mention of rockets. To the German army, this meant that rockets, if developed in secrecy, would be a viable weapon. But building rockets was still predominantly done by civilian enthusiasts. Our idea was to carry mail from one place on Earth to another one. Particularly in Germany, we have a lot of small islands in the North Sea and even in the Baltic Sea. And in bad weather, of course, you couldn't even send the mailman over there. He didn't want to get on a ship and uh, maybe we get stranded. And of course, if you did it by ship, it took you a week to get your mail there. With the rocket, we had figured out already it would take about half an hour. So it was a big advantage. During this period, a brilliant young aristocrat named Werner von Braun became interested in rockets. He'd been obsessed with the idea of space travel ever since his mother had given him a small telescope as a child. Werner von Braun was actively developing his own rocket designs when he approached the German army for funding. They liked his practical ideas and enthusiasm and offered him a job. He was just 20 years old. In 1932, he began working at the Army Experimental Station under the direction of Colonel Walter Dornberger, the man responsible for Army rocket development. It was the start of a long association that would last for over 30 years. When Adolf Hitler came to power, he poured money into a massive expansion of the armed forces and granted additional funds for the Army to build a new rocket research facility. The location chosen for the new site was Pinamunda, an isolated island on the western edge of the Baltic Sea. In 1936, construction crews began turning the forested island into the most modern research center in the world. Pinamunda was an ideal location for a secret rocket base. Heavily forested, it could hide workshops, power plants, and test stands. The whole facility was self-sufficient. My first impression in Pinamunda was that it was a huge enterprise. The area was great on the island. There was a little railroad connecting the different points. There were big hangars, big halls, big laboratories, manufacturing halls, test stands. It was a very great impression. 
Within three years, Pinamunda expanded to include shops and living quarters for the community of 4,000 skilled workers living within its perimeter. A railway brought in another 11,000 employees who lived in nearby towns. The security was very tight, and you normally had to stop at the gate and show your pass. And even the people who came with the railroad, they were normally even checked twice. They were checked once when they got on the railroad, and they were checked again when they finally entered the main area of the facility. The people working at Pinamunda developed a real sense of community. Its sea and long sandy beaches were ideal for recreation. For 20-year-old mathematician Ruth Kraft, it was a perfect place to work. It was a very attractive location on the Baltic Sea. This was a dream holiday destination for people from middle Germany like myself, back in the 30s. I soon sensed that the facility was consciously designed as a kind of ghetto for scientists. The German Army's first two experimental rockets, designated the A1 and A2, were very small and basic. But the A3, which was 20 feet in length, was a practical research device. Its purpose was to improve the steering by the use of gyroscopes and to develop the thrust of the motor which would propel the missile through the sound barrier. In 1937, encouraged by the success of the A3, the German High Command issued specifications for a new rocket. The missile should have a 200-mile range, a one-ton warhead, and be transportable by railway. Von Braun came up with the A4 design. But before the A4 combat rocket could become a reality, another test model was developed, the A5. On this new model, fins were added to improve stability. Test launches over the Baltic Sea were encouraging. Werner von Braun, seen here helping to recover a rocket, was to use the A5 as the standard test model until the A4 could be completed. But on the outbreak of war in September 1939, Hitler reduced funding for long-term rocket research. Hitler had initially not assigned high priority to rocket work. He figured that maybe in a way he was right. He figured that it would take longer than, in his opinion, the war would uh, last. Hitler had been present at one of the early rocket tests and was not impressed. Most people who saw a rocket firing with a lot of noise and a big flame coming out of your rocket engine were really quite impressed. But Hitler just shook his head, turned around and walked away without saying anything. And of course, Stormberger and von Braun were quite disappointed. But Werner von Braun had faith in what was happening at Pinamunda. Given more time, a bigger and more powerful missile would be within his grasp. He feared, however, the time was running out, and without Hitler's support, long-range rocket development in Germany would come to an end.